Welcome back, everybody, to the Seattle Sonics, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K22. Today, we are going to go up to the trade deadline as we have quite a big stretch of games here for our 24 and 22 Sonics who are holding on to that seventh seed in the Western Conference. Not a whole lot has changed statistically. I do want to point out that Kelly Oubre and Oscar Javaselin's stats are broken. Like, Oubre's not averaging 18. I wish he was, but he's definitely not. And then Oscars are messed up too, so I apologize about that. But 2K likes to add random glitches in there for whatever odd reason. I think Lonnie Walker's was also messed up. I don't think he's quite averaging 11 points per game. We also have a prospect profile today, our second prospect profile of the season, in which we will be going over some of the mid-first round guys, which is where we are projected to pick, so there's a good chance we could land one of the players we talk about today. In the previous prospect profile, we went over some of the blue chip prospects and some of the top guys in the class, guys like Jazz Jackson, Deo Emenbonigba, Kyrill Story, and others, but today we're going to focus on some of the mid-rounders. The first player we're going to talk about has seen his stock go up quite a bit this season in Chance Dumas, who plays for the Overtime Elite League, which is kind of like the G League in the sense that it's a non-traditional route to play professional ball, make money, and obviously get prepared for NBA competition. Dumas is a very intriguing player. Offensively, he has some work to do, but he has great athleticism. He's an unbelievable defender. He's good down low. He's good on the perimeter. And his versatility on that side of the floor really gives him a ton of value. So if he can just be a little bit more consistent as a shooter and as a scorer, then I think he could be one of the best players in this draft class and somebody who ends up being a steal wherever he ends up. Another player not coming right out of college is Komani Dobson, who plays for IMG Academy. Of course, with the one-and-done rule being abolished and high school players now allowed to enter the league, Dobson has taken advantage of that, in which he projects to be a lottery pick in this year's class. Dobson is a gifted offensive player. We've seen so many prospects in this draft class who are raw offensively and really good on defense, but Dobson is the opposite. He can drive to the basket. He makes his shots inside. He's a good shooter from mid-range and three, and he's a pretty good playmaker as well, all things considered. He's not a liability defensively either and has pretty good athleticism. Very well-rounded prospect and somebody who I think has a very high floor. The UConn Huskies have a very talented backcourt with a couple of NBA draft-level prospects, including Kyle Cruz, who, of course, has the purple hair, which is his big signature. He has also really risen up draft boards as of recent. Outside of Cruz's three-point shooting, which is definitely not there at the moment, he's a really intriguing prospect. Now, he's only six foot. He's quite small, but... I still think his playmaking ability and his defense and his athletic upside is really intriguing. I don't know if he's a player we will look for with his lack of size, but he is someone who I think will probably go in the lottery. One of my favorite prospects in this draft class is Cole Wagner Jr. out of Texas Tech. He's six foot five, weighs in at around 240. He's a very stocky guy. He's built like a linebacker and is an unbelievable defender. He's also a great athlete as well. And I think he can defend the one through the four, despite only being six foot five. I think his defensive versatility and his athleticism really makes him an intriguing prospect going forward. Offensively, he's inconsistent. He is a good mid-range scorer, but he needs to improve around the basket. He needs to improve as a three-point shooter, but he's an awesome defender. He's an awesome playmaker as well. He currently leads the Big 12 in assists with just over six per game and is a really, really good mid-first-round prospect that I think the Sonics are really going to look at. Scrolling forward now, the next player we're going to look at is Isaiah Thomas out of the University of Auburn. Thomas is a jack-of-all-trades. Doesn't have any glaring strengths, but he also doesn't have any major weaknesses, and because of that, I think he's someone who's going to have a long, successful NBA career, even if he never develops into a superstar. He's a gritty defender who can score from all three levels. He's not a great mid-range scorer, but he's good inside. He's a really solid three-point shooter, one of the better perimeter shooters in the draft class. Added all of his playmaking and his above-average defense. And I think you're looking at someone who's going to carve out a role in this league for 10 or 15 years. And if you can get someone like that in the middle of the first round, then that pick is a major success. Darvarius Johnson out of Duke is one of the most intriguing players in this class, in my opinion. An unbelievable 3 and D guy, but he's a lot more than that. 
currently a sophomore at Duke, and I think he is likely the current favorite to win the National Player of the Year award, leading the number one Duke Blue Devils, who have three NBA quality draft prospects, including Johnson, who's a great scorer from all three levels, particularly as a mid-range and three-point shooter. He's an unbelievable perimeter defender. He's an awesome athlete. He's a pretty good playmaker. Doesn't have any weaknesses to his game. I think he's a fringe top 10 player in this draft class. And don't be surprised if the Sonics look his way in the middle of the first round because I think he is really good. One of the more intriguing international players in this class is Arroyo Laponte out of France. Laponte is a little bit raw. Now he has phenomenal athleticism, but he does need to improve a little bit. I think playing overseas has given him a little bit of a toughness and a little bit of an edge, which will give him an advantage early in his NBA career, but his skills need some honing. He's not a bad scorer. He can score from all three levels, needs to improve as a three-point shooter, but he's an all-right playmaker. He's an all-right defender, but his athleticism is really what makes him an intriguing prospect and somebody who you might want to take a shot on late in the first round. A couple more prospects left to go, starting with another Duke player in Ryan Wilcox, who is a gifted offensive player. Him and Darvarius Johnson, along with point guard Kyrie Winters, are really the most deadly trio in the country. Wilcox has a dangerous fadeaway. He's a really good shooter, and he can also drive to the basket as well and throw it down. His scoring grades, as shown on this graphic, look low, but I think the scouts are wrong about him. I think his scoring attributes are higher than this graphic suggests. Now, he needs to improve on defense. His athleticism is also pretty subpar. But as a scorer, he's a really intriguing player. The last guy we're going to talk about today is another international player in Patrick Macagno from England. Now, he plays for the Irish national team. He has a very interesting story. Was born in England to two English parents, but was moved over to Ireland as a foster child, and he has elected to play for the Irish national team because he's been a citizen there so long, and he feels that he is Irish, and that's where he really grew up, and that's how he has become a really good basketball player. McCognu is a really interesting late first-round flyer. He's a little bit rough around the edges, but I think he has a lot of upside on both ends of the floor. He's a solid athlete. Good enough offensively, good enough defensively, and somebody who the Sonics might want to take a flyer on, particularly if they move down in round one. So that will conclude today's prospect profile. Let me know what you guys thought of the players down in the comments. So now we're going to play a game here. I wanted to figure out which one I found most interesting from now until the trade deadline. And I think it's this first one against the 27-14 and 14 Washington Wizards, who have been the biggest pleasant surprise in the NBA. Their highest rated player is Dante DiVincenzo. Their leading scorer is Spencer Dinwiddie. Yet they are the three seed in the East, and they have played better with losing Bradley Beal in the sign-in trade this offseason to the Dallas Mavericks, who actually have a worse record than the Washington Wizards, which is a really big surprise. I have no clue how this team has won two-thirds of their games, but they've managed to pull it off, and I figured they'd be a fun team to go and play against, really see what they're made of. We have struggled against really good teams as of recent, and I guess this will help us figure out if the Wizards are a really good team. The Sonics win the tip-off, and we are underway. Seattle and Washington. Davion Mitchell brings it up. Quick pass out for Jordan Poole. Who lets it fly from beyond the arc? Good start for Seattle, quickly getting a three-pointer to fall. The Wizards rock in their city jerseys as there's Corey Kispert from beyond the arc. Poor defense by Seattle, assisted by DiVincenzo. 7-5 now, Seattle on top. Here's Dinwiddie. Back out to DiVincenzo with a dime inside for Spencer Dinwiddie, who gets the slam. Dinwiddie's been one of the more underrated players in the league in recent years, and he has really taken on that leadership role here in Washington and has thrived. Nice cut to get the layup for Cam Reddish, his first points of the game, as we are now tied at nine. Dinwiddie in the corner for a wide open Dante three. Vincenzo as he sinks for triple. Wizards now up. Here's Kispert bringing up the court with a great pass for Spencer Dinwiddie in the corner. And the Washington Wizards with a pair of three-pointers causing Seattle to call timeout. Following Washington possession, again, it's Dante DiVincenzo getting Jordan Poole on the crossover step back. The Wizards are currently hot. 18 points here in the first half of the first quarter. Their offense looks great, and they're not showing any signs of slowing down. Dinwiddie with the slam dunk. It's now 13-20. DiVincenzo blocked at the rim by Bagley. Then has Oscar rip it away from him. 
Oscar passes it out for Kelly Oubre Jr., who started his career in Washington with the Wizards, hitting the three. Oubre has played for three teams since, including our Seattle Sonics. Here's Dante DiVincenzo trying to make a move inside, showing off the layup package on that one. Great start offensively tonight for Dante DiVincenzo. Here's Lonnie Walker with the finish. One-handed dunk for Lonnie Walker. And the Sonics bench is looking pretty good on offense. Here's Oscar Jeba Seelan. Gonna let it fly from deep, cutting the lead in half to three. 21-26 now. That pass is tipped and caught by Marvin Bagley. Bagley not on the scoreboard today, but that will change as he backs down the big man and gets the layup to go in. 25-26 now. Sonics cut it to one. And Oscar Jeba Seelan will hit the three. That'll put Seattle up 28-26. Winding moments of the first quarter. Seattle trying to extend their lead. It's Oscar J. Basilan again. Gonna let it fly from deep. Can he get another one? Not quite. A solid first quarter. Seattle is winning on the road against a really good Washington Wizards team. And the Sonics bench unit played really well at the end of that first quarter. On to the second. A great start for Washington as Corey Kispert completely misses the rim. That is air ball. And that play really shows you where the momentum is. It belongs to completely the Sonics. R.J. Hampton misses the step back three, but then rips it away from Kispert. Reddish gets it back out to Hampton for the layup. Great play by R.J. Hampton, who has really been playing some good ball lately. He is going to be in line for more minutes if he continues to play well. Buzz blocks the shot on the fast break. Reddish back out to R.J. Hampton, who sinks the three. He was heavily contested on that shot, but it doesn't matter. It still goes in, and it is now a seven-point lead here for the Sonics. Dinwiddie driving inside, gets it out to Davis Bertuntz, who makes the three. That'll give Washington some momentum back as they look completely out of it right now. Reddish over to Buzz, who fools the defender on the pump fake. I'm surprised he did not go for the dunk, but instead the layup. Nonetheless, it is good for Buzz Wigington, the number one overall pick in last year's draft, who now has six points. Poor play by Buzz on defense. He wanted to hunt after the ball, but that leaves Davis Bertuntz wide open for another three. The Wizards have had too many open looks from deep. Seattle has to play smarter help defense. Again, another open look there for Spencer Dinwiddie. There was eventually a contest on that shot, but it was a little bit too late, and this game is now tied at 39. Seattle trying to get the lead back. It's Killer Cam Reddish from deep. That'll put Seattle back up, 42-39. But the Wizards will quickly answer back. Kispert nails it from deep. I can't really blame the Sonics defense for that one. They did everything right. Jordan Poole had a hand in his face, but Corey Kispert was just too much there. Now tied at 42. Poole off the screen, answers right back. Both teams are red hot shooting the basketball right now. All about offense, which is pretty much every Washington Wizards game in the past five years, I would say. Spencer Dinwiddie with the slam. Nearly had that one ripped away from him, but he gets the dunk. Wizards now up by three. They are stealing the momentum. Here's Moses Brown with the slam, assisted by Denny Avdia. Seattle calls timeout as the Wizards are on a nice run here, nearing the end of the first half. Under a minute to go now. DiVincenzo from deep. What is happening? The Sonics have completely fallen off, and the Wizards now lead by double figures. 45-55, Oscar J. Basilan finally gets them out of the rut with a nice step back mid-ranger. Ten seconds left to go here in the half. Oscar's going to call for a screen. It's Marvin Bagley who is going to try to get open. Maybe not the guy you really want shooting it here. Bagley's shot is no good. That'll conclude the first half. Minus the final, like, three minutes, it was a really good half of basketball from the Sonics. They just imploded there at the end, but they're only down by eight. And we'll see if Seattle can make a comeback and stop the Wizards offensively because Washington has been shooting the lights out. And that continues right at the beginning of the second half. Corey Kispert, who played very well in the first half, sinks the triple. 47-58, Jordan Poole, no good. Rebounded by Marvin Bagley, who gets the putback over Thomas Bryant. Good play for Bagley, now 53-62. Again, both offenses really playing well here early in the second half. As the layup is good for Spencer Dinwiddie, Seattle calls time. The Sonics defense just looks off right now. And they have played pretty well offensively today for the most part. But on defense, it has been a struggle. Nice step back for Davion Mitchell. He's had a quiet day, only four points so far. Nine-point deficit. Buzz Wigington and R.J. Hampton trying for a little two-man game. And Buzz connects from deep. His first three of the game. Sonic sprinting within six. 
Here's Dinwiddie. He fools Mitchell on the pump fake. And the Wizards with excellent passing there. Finished off by the three by Bertans. Washington is really passing it well. They always find a way to get somebody open. And they have not missed their shots tonight. 58-67. Hampton with the slam. RJ Hampton continues to be a bright spot off the bench. On both ends of the floor, Davion Mitchell has really struggled on defense, which is usually his calling card. But Archer Hampton has outperformed him on that end of the floor. Nice dunk for Corey Kispert. Remains a nine-point game. Reddish on the pump fake, trying to drive inside. Passes it out for RJ Hampton, who makes another one. Hampton with a team-high 16 points, and it is a six-point game. Reddish in the corner. Again, it's Hamp time, ladies and gentlemen. RJ Hampton again from deep. It's a one-score game. But right when that happens, the Wizards get an open look. It's Malik Monk. The Wizards had three wide-open players from the three-point line, and they got to choose who shot the ball there, and it happened to be Monk. Malik Monk is again wide open for three. Whenever the Sonics go out to play help defense, they don't realize somebody is left wide open, and that's bit them in the butt tonight. Here's Reddish with the two-handed slam. Even though Washington has not missed really all day, the Sonics' offense is holding a float. It's only a five-point game. Monk gets it out for a wide open man. That's Rui Hachimura. And again, the perimeter defense and the help defense for the Sonics tonight continues to be poor. And they continue to stay alive with their scoring. Cam Reddish makes the three and the Sonics are only down by three points. Monk trying to get a last second shot. Beautiful step back over Lonnie Walker and it will fall. So the Wizards make it a five-point game as Davion Mitchell misses the full-court shot. Offensively, Seattle was great in that quarter. Defensively, they were really bad. Oscar J. Basilan opens up the fourth of the dunk. Oscar did not play at all in the third, but expect him to play a lot in the fourth, especially with Davion Mitchell having a rough game really on both ends of the floor tonight. Spencer Dinwiddie with it. Guarded by Oscar. Dinwiddie blows right by him and gets the slam. Oscar's calling card is also defense, and he has also struggled there tonight. Here's Washington on the fast break. DiVincenzo gets it out for an open man. Again, it is Spencer Dinwiddie who continues to play lights out, and Washington leads by 10. Seattle's poor defense finally appears to be catching up for them, but RJ Hampton is still red hot. He makes another three-pointer. Now 86-95, about six minutes to go. Oscar, step back, gets Dinwiddie leaded, and he hits the mid-ranger. What a move by Oscar J. 88-95. Here is Dinwiddie in the corner trying to make a drive. He gets it to the open. Thomas Bryant who beats the shot clock. Marvin Bagley tried to play after the ball. That let Bryant get wide open. And again, the help defense has cost the Sonics tonight. And they are continuing to stay in the ball game. Oscar J. Basilin makes another three as it's a seven-point game. Here's Jim Arnold with the drive and the finish. Jim Arnold. Going up there with the slam, his first points of the game. It is a three-point game with three minutes to go. 97 to 100. Reddish to Kelly Oubre for the tie! Kelly Oubre from deep, and we're knotted up at 100 with three minutes to go. The Wizards answer right back. Davis Bertans will make the three. He is four for four from beyond the arc tonight. And the Washington Wizards are right back on top, 100 to 103. Here is Kispert, in a little bit of trouble. Gets it out for Spencer Dinwiddie, who blows right by Reddish. And Spencer Dinwiddie continues to abuse this defense tonight. Now a five-point lead here for the Wizards. Here is Kispert, guarded by Hampton. Fade away. Bang! RJ Hampton did nothing wrong there. Corey Kispert just made a really tough shot. The Sonics offense looks lost right now. Look at the shot clock. It's all the way run down. The Sonics cannot get anybody open. They have not scored in the past two minutes. Just inexcusable offensively. Here's the next Seattle possession. 35 seconds to go. They have to get a shot. Reddish is double teamed, leaving Oscar Jabasilin wide open. It's only a four-point game, and now Seattle has to play the foul game with under 30 seconds to go. There's Kispert, fouled by Cam Reddish. He would make both three throws, and it's a six-point game. Hampton gets it out to Oscar. Seattle has to get off a shot quickly. Hampton over to Bull. Back to Hampton, who attempts the three. It is well short, and again, Seattle has to fall, but that feels like the ball game. 103-111 is your final. A, a tough loss here for the Sonics, and Seattle definitely held their own until the end of the game. I think offensively, the Sonics were overall pretty good, but defensively, it was a struggle. For those of you who play basketball in real life, you probably know the term, see man, see ball, when referring to defense. 
Well, we only saw a ball. Whenever somebody was driving to a basket, we had like three guys help, which is good, meaning contested layups, but that leaves so many players wide open on the perimeter. Dinwiddie and Kispert really killed us. They combined for 54 points tonight. Archie Hampton was great off the bench. He had 22, 18 for Oscar, a double-double for Reddish, a near double-double for Buzz, and double figures as well for Kelly Oubre. I don't think we played horribly there. I think if our defense was better and if Washington wasn't so red hot, we would have won that game, but... Oh, well, it is what it is. It's not like Washington's a bad team. They're 28 and 14. So we're going to move up to the deadline, and we would get quite a few trade offers during our sim, which, I mean, makes sense considering we're almost at the trade deadline. Unfortunately, all of these trade offers sucked. There was not really any I was interested in. Cam Reddish was very popular, and with him needing an extension at the end of the year, I see why. But Cam Reddish is not a player I plan on moving on from. We just got offered Robert Williams for him, which I guess isn't terrible, but still no. Here are the all-star rosters with Luka and Giannis as the captain. Unfortunately, no Sonics. I think Buzz Wigington got snubbed, to be brutally honest. I mean, the way our team has improved this year, largely because of Buzz Wigington, I feel like he deserves to be an all-star, but unfortunately, he will not. So in our nine-game sim, we ended up going 5-4, and four, which is... Solid. We're still comfortably the seven seed at 29 and 27. And at the deadline, we're in an interesting spot. We have an arsenal of draft picks and an opportunity to possibly buy and try to push towards getting one of the top six seeds so we can clinch a playoff spot and not have to worry about the plan. With just under 26 games, I believe, left in the season, it is all hands on deck for our Sonics to try to get a playoff spot, and that starts here with the deadline. We might also go over the All-Star stuff in the next episode. I'm not entirely sure what my plan with that is, but I hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.